Welcome back. If you've just joined us, you're watching the News at 10 on Channel's television. A reminder of our top stories. Senate moves to investigate allegations of corruption against GMD of NNPC and Inspector General of Police. Federal government approves 26 of 67 billion naira owed power distribution companies. EFCC rearrests former permanent secretary in the Ministry of Labor over 606 million naira fraud. And pro secession Catalans defy Spanish King's warning in continuing the push for independence. Now, for more on our top stories and others, please visit our website, channelstv.com and youtube.com forward slash channels web. Also, please log on to m.channelstv.com to watch us on your mobile device or download the Channels TV app for Android, iOS and Windows devices from their respective stores. Having the Channels TV and Channels 24 apps will give you access to news and updates. You'll also have access to the eyewitness feature with which you can share those pictures, videos or news of happenings around you. Just install the app, then tap and swipe to reveal the eyewitness menu and follow the instructions to share those pictures, videos or news of happenings around you. Now here are some of the pictures you sent in to our eyewitness portal, beginning the, with this one from Wuse Market in Abuja, the federal capital, showing children whom our eyewitness reporter says are homeless and so wonder about the markets. He's calling on non-governmental organizations to do something about that. Still from Abuja comes these set of pictures from Katampe Road, a Jabi district of the FCT. Our eyewitness reporter decries the stress motorists go through on this road. He's also worried about the rate of accidents on the road, especially at night, and wants the Federal Ministry of Works to address this quickly. And here in Lagos are these set of images from Greenland Estate in Mende around Maryland. The pictures show stranded residents whom our eyewitness reporters said had to wade through the water to get to their destination. Also in the pictures are shorts of a car which got stuck in the flood. Our eyewitness reporter is calling on the Lagos State Government to help them out of this predicament. Still from Lagos comes our final picture from Safinat era area of Ojo. Our eyewitness reporter sent this message of sagging cables. He's calling on men of the Ikeja Electricity Distribution Company to fix them to prevent a mishap. We well, thank you for sending these pictures in. Please note that you too can report events as they happen around you. All you have to do is download the Channels TV free apps and follow the instructions. The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, today rearrested a permanent secretary in the Federal Ministry of Labor and Productivity, Clement Ilo Onoborgo, for alleged mismanagement of P funds. The agency's operatives picked him up at the premises of the Federal High Court in Lagos, saying he had shunned an invitation to clear the air over an alleged diversion of 606 billion naira Shopee fund on his watch. Mr. Onubogu was in court for his trial in a separate charge filed against him by the Commission and bordering on non-declaration of some of his hidden cash assets. According to the EFCC, the accused failed to declare the sum of 97 million naira, $140,000, and 10,000 pounds found in three of his bank accounts. Chief Emeka Ayoko is an elder statesman and one of Nigeria's foremost diplomats who served as the third Secretary General of the Commonwealth. Today, this man is being celebrated by his kinsmen, having devoted 50 years of his life to public service, research, and international diplomacy. And one way they are honoring him is by setting up an institute of international studies and diplomacy at the Namdi Azikiwe University in Oka, Anambra State. The event brought together prominent Nigerians, including a former head of state, General Abdul Salami Abubakar. Dignitaries from all walks of life converge on the Namdi Azikwe University, Oka, for the official launch of Emeka Yoku Institute of International Studies and Diplomacy, which the Vice Chancellor and the entire university family conceive as a way of immortalizing the public service of the statesman, Chief Emeka Yoku, who devoted 50 years of his life to international diplomacy. It is our progress and hard work that is structured dedicated to the pursuits of this field of human endeavor, to which he committed his own life and located in his own country, in his own land. 
criminel à ta vie. For the chairman of the occasion, General Ike Wanchuku, and the special guest of the occasion, General Abdul Salam Yabubakar, they pour encomiums on the man of the moment and also draw attention to national issues. We need a country that all Nigerians will feel happy to live in, to feel happy to defend. A country based on equity, fairness, and justice. Without peace, there will be no country. Without peace, there wouldn't be a university. Without peace, there wouldn't be a new whole institute for diplomacy. The Anambra state governor, Mr. Willy Obiano, describes Chief Emeka Ayoku as a gift of Nigeria to the world. I thank you for guiding this administration and for your bold statements, uh, irrespective of uh, who starts his thoughts, you know, I commend you, sir. Chief Emeka Ayoku, with much relief, says his works will now find a place of permanent abode at the Emeka Ayoku Institute of International Studies and Diplomacy. I will now deposit my personal papers, which arose while I was in service, and all the books, not many of them, but the few books that I have written, both during and since my re retirement from the post of Secretary General. I will deposit all these at this institute. The foundation stone lane of the Emeka Yaoku Institute of International Studies and Diplomacy is done with many notable Nigerians contributing to the realization of the project, a reflection of the esteem with which the man is held. The federal government says it will bring a former Minister of Petroleum Resources, Mrs. Diaziani, Alison Madrike, back to the country to face corruption charges when necessary. The Minister of Justice and Attorney General of the Federation, Abubakar Melami, believes Mrs. Alison Madrike's extradition is not necessary at this time since the UK government is already investigating her. His comment is in response to applications by a counsel to Mrs. Alison Madrike asking the Federal High Court in Lagos to order the Attorney General to bring her back to Nigeria from the United Kingdom. Some pensioners in Delta State are protesting against the non-payment of their entitlements by the state government. The retirees are also asking the state government to explain how it spent the Paris Club funds recently released by the federal government. For the second time in six days, pensioners in Delta State take to the streets of Asaba, the state capital, singing the same tune. This time, it's retirees under the umbrella of the Association of Retired Local Government Staff and Primary School Teachers Contributory Pension, who stormed the State House of Assembly to vent their grievances. Their placards give a clear description of their demands. In December 2016, the sum of 40 billion dollars was released by the federal government from the Paris Club Fund to this state. No cobalt was given to us. Yes. Again, 10 billion was released recently in June. No cobalt was given to us. We cannot go keep quiet. Some of the state's lawmakers approach the protesters from behind the safety of the State House of Assembly's gates to respond to their concerns. We will carry your message back to the Speaker and the full House. And then we will also communicate your message to the Governor. And I know that the Governor that has a listening ear will do something. But the pensioners are not done yet. They depart from the assembly complex in a convoy of vehicles to take their protest to the Delta State Government House. They are met by a wall of security men, but that does not mute their song or their demand to see the government. The law says after two months of your retirement, you take your gratuity. Is our data law different? Data state law. No, Is it a crime to serve data state for 35 oh, years? Shortly after the chief of staff to the governor, and the state's head of service arrive on the scene to hear them. All you have just stated is the obvious that even in the circumstances, even if it is reduced, 
it is simply reduced because the resources are not there. The total receipt from uh, the Paris Club is not up to 50% of the expectations yet. Again, the protesters disperse, armed with only promises to address their issues. They can only hold on to hope that the government will demonstrate some sincerity and save the pensioners from further hardship. A select group of young African leaders have returned from the United States of America after six weeks of specialized training at American universities. As part of the Mandela Washington Fellowship Program, extensive training and networking opportunities are provided to enhance leadership impact in local contexts. Approximately 50 young Nigerian leaders pledge to make tangible impact on their societies as they return home. Our correspondent, Ajuri Ingalali, has that report. Just back from the United States, this association of Mandela Washington Fellows from Nigeria gather here in Lagos, not only to rub minds, but also to receive training from experts who encourage them to multiply their impact. These are the young Nigerian leaders at work. Representing the hope of a generation, they come from all parts of the country and synergize for greater impact. Uh, I'm a machine fabricator. What I do is to help farmers scale up uh, profits uh, via uh, mechanization. And we're talking about local content. So we make use of local materials to do our fabrication. And uh, from I came here uh, principally to learn about grant writing, and so far I've learned a lot. I've added to what I know. Economic development. Mentoring is a critical part of leadership training. Compelling and clear. That's a good idea. Write that down. On this day, teaching young leaders how to create wider impact is the function of Darcy Zotto. What we are here to do is to amplify positive change. We don't have the answers for Nigeria, but these folks do, and we're confident of that. And if we can get a hold of them and we can amplify the positive change through them supporting their work, those are some solutions. With calls growing louder for a new generation of leadership in the country, these young people sharpen their focus for the task that lies ahead. Reporting from Lagos, Ajuri Ngilale, Channels Television News. When the news at 10 returns, OPEC Secretary General Nigeria's Mohamed Bakindo sees rebalancing in the global oil market in 2018. That will be in the business news. Please stay with us.